All right, looks like we're live. Hello to everybody. Let's give this just a few minutes here. Make sure my audio is good and everything else. How's everybody doing today? Right, right in the comments, uh, the area you're from. You don't have to say your address or anything, but I like to always see that. People say, you know, from whatever state in America or whatever country or whatever else. Audio is good. Good. So what area is everybody from? I like to see that. Netherlands. Peace in Arizona, Texas. <laughs> Utah, Ohio. New Hampshire, it's getting close to me. Uh, Germany, Chechia, Indiana, Iowa, Arkansas, Minnesota, Min two Minnesotas there, Louisiana, Nova Scotia, UK, Canada. That's great. The amazing thing about YouTube and the internet, uh, you can get in contact with a lot of people. It's pretty neat. So, okay, we're, we'll get started here. Um, other video on Gene Kemp, yes. <laughs> uh, a lot of people have been told me, I, I was bringing out some stuff on Gene Kim, and they said, you know, you have to watch this video he did about this 100% uh, picture proof that uh, Jesus married a black woman thing and I thought I know what he's trying to say by this thing I, I understand very well but uh, okay I'll watch it so you know when I get some time watched it last night and I just was stunned um, at how many times he lied in this whole thing uh, and I need to explain something okay um, when you get a charismatic preacher like Peter Ruckman or like Jack Hiles, and they teach younger men. And I have to watch out for this from for myself. A lot of I've I've seen the thing of Brian worship and whatever because I you know I have a weird sense of of uh, humor and and you know, whatever else. And you can fall into the sin of emulation after a while. People start to emulate you. It's one thing to esteem a preacher very highly in love for his work's sake especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. I get that. Um, not a problem. But when you start to worship the guy and put him up on a pedestal and then you start to imitate him, that becomes a problem. It becomes a very big problem. And Jack Hiles, uh, he was, if you don't know who Jack Hiles is, I've done videos on him, big, one of the biggest Baptist pastors of the 20th century going into the 21st century. I forget what year it was he died. I think it might have been 2001, 2000. It was after the year 2000. But um, Jack Hiles inspired a lot of young men. Stephen Anderson and the new IFB cult came out of the Jack Hiles movement. And a guy like Jack Hiles was very good at doing certain things to bewitch people. Um, and get rid of that thing there. And uh, they put on a show, they put on a big performance, and young men say, hey, I'd like to be like that. And, you know, Jack Scapp, uh, who was the son-in-law of Jack Hiles, he took over for Jack Hiles and ended up, you know, committing fornication with a 17-year-old girl with a minor. He's in prison. I don't know if he's still in prison or if he's coming out soon. I don't know. Um, David Hiles, Jack Hiles' son, uh, multiple you know, adultery relationships, adulterous relationships, married a couple times. It was bad. Um, Peter Ruckman. Peter Ruckman had a lot of good things that he said, um, and he would come out with these startling revelations, these little nuggets of truth. And um, Ruckman got a lot of his, his material from other preachers. He even said about that. Most of his material was not his own. And what happened is I've met a lot of different um, graduates of PBI in person and online i knew quite a few of them had an older guy that was uh actually went to pbi in the early early days um and he was part of our house church 
So I know guys from PBI and some of them come away with their own personality. They do their own thing, but a lot of them come out as Ruckman robots and they come out, they want that worship. They like, they see that and they, it's very attractive to them. All right. Um, let me show you some scripture here before we get into the video. Um, we'll go to um, Acts chapter 8, which Gene Kim goes to here in this video of his. And you go down here, uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 9. Let me maximize this so we can see it better. Um, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, which Gene Kim does. Uh, greatest sermon on this and that, whatever. Problem. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying this man is the great power of God. Right? That's what a lot of people say about Gene Kim. Look at the comments. Just, oh, he's a great man. He's wonderful. Oh, brother, you know, Kim, oh, I just think you're great. Uh, problem. But um, you jump down here, then uh, to verse 17. Then lay they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Um, and that's what Gene Kim is. Gene Kim wants to be the next big shot preacher, the next Jack Hiles or Peter Ruckman or whatever else, and he's making all the right contacts and doing all the right things. But being a novice and not understanding things, he tries to find these nuggets of truth and bring them out, these just radical titles, just weird stuff to get views, which you can see right here, you know, this radical title right here, 885,000 views. And it's a total lie. And I actually watched, there's a video, if you get down through here, this guy right here, don't know who this guy is, but he's, you know, all these question marks and he's confused he's watching the thing and he's going huh what that doesn't make sense that doesn't i don't know this is interesting i don't know and he's confused this guy is confusing people but because he's coming out with these startling revelations and ironically the guy that i just showed the video he says at the end he says he says you know i think he's just trying to come out with some kind of a new revelation type of a thing um okay let me just address this right here, this comment. Put this up on screen. You sound jealous, bro. Why do you care what he posts? Because I'm a Bible-believing Christian. Please open your mind, okay? Whoever you are, if you're one of Gene Kim's followers, please open your mind and actually look at what I'm going to be showing in this, all right? Um, if you answer the matter before you hear it, it's folly and shame unto you. Please listen. If you're saved, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, nobody is above reproach. Right? Don't worship men. It's very important that you keep preachers in mind. Gene Kim, if you're watching, you need to think about what I'm saying here. You lied in this video numerous times, and it's very serious and blasphemous. But what I'm trying to say here is this is the kind of stuff that sows a lot of confusion out there and makes Bible believers look like buffoons and coming out with this clickbait stuff. What women have God's super body part? What is it? Come on. What is that? You know, and all the time these these uh you know thumbnail pictures coming up this this YouTube Macaulay Culkin home alone thing of you know to get views. Come on. It's not the way a Bible believing preacher does things, but let's watch this video. We're going to go through the whole thing and I'm going to be showing some scriptures uh with this thing, and you will not believe what this guy says. He openly lies and he and I can prove 100%. There was a the video I did on Jack Hiles. The one guy stands up, one of the students stands up, and he says, if Jack, he said, if Brother Hiles told us that 2 plus 2 equals 5, we'd believe it. Amen. And that the, the Baptist thing, I came out of the Baptist churches. I preached in the Baptist churches. Baptists are man worshipers. Okay. There's very few that aren't. There's some out there that the guy's humble and whatever and say, no, don't want to worship me. Most of them expect to be worshipped. And that's so dangerous. And you're going to see that. And the way that you can tell if somebody is has that control, that that uh, um, 
basically the, that they can control the people's minds. And, and please, like I said, anybody in the comments, if you don't like me or whatever, please just listen to what I'm saying in this. Forget who I am. I can't stand whatever. Listen to what I'm saying, because what he's teaching is very dangerous. But when you have somebody that can say, turn your Bible, and then the people turn in their Bible, and they're sitting there looking, and he tells you the exact opposite of what the Bible is saying in front of you, and nobody calls him out, you have a cult. And that's what Gene Kim does towards the end of this video. I could not believe what he says. He lies. He, I'll just tell you right away. He says that God cast away the Jewish people plainly and tells the people to go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, verse 1. Hath God cast away his people, which he foreknew? God forbid. And Gene Kim says he cast away his people. He cast away the Jews. Turn to Romans chapter 11. I mean, you can see it right there on, on the whiteboard behind him in this, in this thumbnail picture there. You can see it. It says Romans 11. You'll see in the video. But there's a bunch of other points that we need to make that it's just really bad. Okay? So here we go. Yeah. Um, oh, Gene Kim doesn't put ads on his videos. Oh, yeah. Okay, what's that? Okay. Here we go. We're going to look at Song of Solomon, Chapter 1. Now, what amazes me is that... Okay, can everybody hear his voice there? Just give me a real quick comment. Um, say, you know, can, can you hear the audio of Gene Kim? Did you hear that? I just want to make sure I have everything clicked on right before I keep playing this. Somebody could give me a comment. Yes, okay, good. Thank you. All right, let's continue. That when we try to disprove the black Hebrew movement, they automatically assume that I'm a racist. <laughs> so I don't know why they would do that. So they automatically think I'm a racist, and if you look online and type my name, it's amazing how many videos criticizing me are from Black Hebrew Movement, actually. I think someone even made a roast video of me, too. It's very childish <laughs> and immature. But the thing is this, is that obviously we're not racist. I mean, we have black members in our church. Brother Rick, I mean, he studied tons of stuff about conspiracies, and his father was born from Ethiopia, actually. And he actually criticized the black Hebrew movement. So uh, we actually rented uh, our church from a black church for many years. So the thing is this, is that we're not racist against black people. In fact, I'm going to give you a video right here, which is going to be very interesting. You got to understand this. Jesus' wife, the Christian church, mm -hmm. there's only one race that is pictured as the black person. Okay, uh, lie number one. That's not true. All right. Um, I'll just go ahead and go there a while. If you go back to Revelation chapter 19, where the marriage happens, the marriage of the Lamb happens. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's go down here. Verse 7, Revelation 19, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And that's the mention. Um, where did it say anything about her race? It didn't. Um, and if you want to try to teach this thing doctrinally, um, that makes a real problem because basically then only black Christians are part of the bride of Christ. So Shemitic people and Japhetic people like myself, whites and Orientals, in other words, we're not part of the, the uh, bride of Christ then. Or we all turn black when we get to heaven. <laughs> okay. What he does is he tries to go back and take a type which isn't even totally accurate. It's not even, doesn't even completely apply. And then he says, it's, he teaches it as doctrine because he, he wants to get this interesting, oh, oh, you know, thing. And by doing that, trying to get this ultra nugget thing, it just makes a whole big doctrinal problem. That's why he's false. He's a deceiver. He's doing it for views. Look at that. Nearly 1 million views. That's good money for ad revenue there, by the way. And, and the smug, you know, thing. It's like he's, I, I found it. 
See, don't you question me. I found it. Let's continue. I'm, I'm going to try to be very calm in this. I get ticked off and I get real sarcastic and whatever else and, and things. <laughs> but understand that's part of my personality. But, you know, here we go. Didn't you know that? The Church of Jesus Christ, you got to understand, its picture, its symbol was actually a black woman. Uh, no, it isn't. I just showed that. There's not one verse of scripture that says that. Not one. Now, we're going to first of all look at Song of Solomon chapter 1. Song of Solomon, all Christian scholars know this. Even liberals know this too. Song of Solomon is a book that has a lot of romantic passages. So then liberal scholars and Christian scholars, they've all wondered, you know, why would the Christian church put this as part of their Bible? And then Christian scholars have argued this. We put the Song of Solomon right there because it's a beautiful picture of the relationship of Jesus Christ and the church, his wife. Um, some people made that connection, but that's not what it is doctrinally. Okay. Um, it's a little illustration, little sermon illustration, but it's not some official thing. And I'm going to show you the reason why here in just a few minutes. You have to be real careful with the sword of the spirit. It can cut you badly. So obviously Jesus Christ would be Solomon. And then the church would be the woman at the book of Song of Solomon, chapter one. Okay, that's a problem because King Solomon later turned against God because of his outlandish wives. So if it's picturing Jesus Christ, where do you stop that? If King Solomon is a picture of Jesus Christ, and you can make some little applications there, I get it. But there's also some applications that King Solomon was like the Antichrist. You know, he had 666 talents of gold in one year, the one time. You know, 666. The only other man that that's tied to in the Bible is the Antichrist. So you get into this stuff, it starts to be a problem. Um. Now, Song of Solomon, uh, I'm not going to do this. I showed it at a different video, but I showed you a Song of Solomon. It proved to you here that Solomon, who pictured Jesus Christ, not only that Jesus came from Solomon, is actually a Jew. And you can think of the Jew in the nation of Israel today. I showed you the features of that. It's not a black Jesus. But the problem is this. See, this is one something that I want to show the black Hebrew movement right here. The black Hebrew movement, what they've done is that because they're so focused on becoming a Jew and becoming Jesus, something that they are not, wanting something that they are not, they're overlooking a blessing where they're something that they could be, that they should be glad about, about their race, but they Amen. totally ignored it because they wanted to be something that God didn't intend them to be. Amen. And see, that's a good, valuable lesson for all Christians. God has given you something that other people don't have. But the problem with us is that we get so covetous and we get so fleshy minded. Covetous? <laughs> covetous? Sorry, I heard that. I thought, what? What's he talking about? Covetous. That we want that something else that God did not want us to have. Amen. And we overlook the blessing that we currently have right now that God has given to you. Mm -hmm. And I want the black Hebrew movement to understand that. I know that black Christians and black Bible believers know already what I'm talking about. So they don't need to know this stuff. But I'm going to show you something right here. Go to Song of Solomon chapter 1. Now look at the first verses. They should have looked at the first verses right here rather than trying to prove that Jesus was a black person all the way at the end of Revelation. Look at the first chapter, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, and we will read verse 5. I am what? Black. Black. A comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Notice that this black person is differentiated, distinguished from what? The women in Jerusalem, thus proving that the Jews weren't a black people. This is different right here. Now let's keep reading. As the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of who? Solomon. So this woman is distinguished from Solomon. So this is definitely talking about the woman. She's a black woman, folks. Look not upon me, because I am what? Black. Black. Because the sun hath looked upon me, my mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. So you'll notice right here that 
Solomon's wife, the woman here, which is pictured as a church by Christian theologians. So I'm not saying Bible believers. Liberals even know this too, that Christian pastors, Christian theologians and scholars, they all use Song of Solomon as a picture of the relationship of Christ and the church. Well, if they're going to say that, then you know what they're going to have to believe? That the woman, is the, the woman, which is pictured as a church, is black. Okay, um, no. It's talking, if you want to make some spiritual application, it's just Gentile. It's not that she's black and that make a big thing about that. It's just, okay, she's the Gentiles there and, and whatever. But the problem is Solomon, in doing what he did, taking in outlandish women, some of them were Hermetic, in doing that, he sinned. Okay, let me show you. So if you want to make that about Jesus Christ in the church, then you're saying that Jesus is a sinner. It's very serious to teach that thing. This this novice here doesn't know what in the world he's doing. He's just making a mess of scripture. What you want to do is just type in outlandish. Okay. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 23. I'll maximize this so we can read it. Let me see if I can zoom in on that, make it a little bit bigger. Um, in those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. Like Ruth the Moabitess. They weren't supposed to do that. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves. Interracial marriage is strictly forbidden in the Old Testament among the Jews. Did not King Solomon of Israel sin by these things? So Gene Kim wants to make the bride of Christ black, the church is black, and Solomon is Jesus. Then you're making Jesus out to be a sinner. That's very serious. Yet among many nations, there was there no king like him who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women calls to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives? Oh, it's it's about uh, this whole thing is about the church and Jesus and whatever. Ah, boy, you have to be real careful with that stuff. Taking it as just there's a somewhat of a picture there, you know, whatever. And then taking it and kind of teaching it as doctrine. Oh, boy, really dangerous. But see, again, like I'm saying. That's what these little cult followers do. The little Ruckman robots. Rucktards, as some of the enemies will call them. What they'll do is they say, my great teacher, Peter Ruckman, there, my idol, he did all these amazing things and showed these, oh, wow, that's really profound. And so I'm going to come up with those things too. Hmm, you know, um, had a young guy come here years ago to interview me, uh, Joshua Alvarez. And he came and I was talking to him about, you know, the, the thing of what is true repentance and salvation, and everything. He made this documentary and um, and he, he came up with this weird thing. I forget what it was, something in Romans, the book of Romans, chapter such and such. And, and he got the numbers of the verses. And then that means that you can sin so many times before you get in trouble with the Lord or something because of the number of the verse. Just ridiculous. I didn't tell him that. He just came up with it on his own because he wanted to be a big shot. Ended up going off to David Peacock's uh, Bible Institute, which is right down there in Florida, not far from um, the Bible Baptist Institute. And Joshua Alvarez, last I heard, he just fell off the deep end, got into Arianism that Jesus has created and a bunch of other stuff. Why? I want to be this great preacher. I'm going to be the next Baptist preacher. And I'm going to go to the churches and they'll say, it's an honor to have Dr. Gene Kim here this evening. And no scripture at all okay um so let's let's continue here this is as cult leaders do it gets worse all right so yeah jesus in the church king solomon and his black wife that's proof there no it's not here's another interesting thing we're going to look at acts chapter 8 acts chapter 8 there 
Look, if you're going to insist on becoming a Jew, you're going to overlook something very important right here that's even more important than a Jew, actually. Amen. And I'm going to show you something here why it's going to be even more important than a Jew. We're going to look. I have to post your comment here, sister. No offense, Brother Brian. I thought you were a rock tart at one point. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, you know, uh, I've, I just, I believe in giving credit where credit's due, you know. Um, I've learned a lot from Peter Ruckman, but uh, certainly I'm not a Ruckmanite. I did it as a sarcastic joke. I made a video like that, but uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> but I like the sense of humor there. Let's continue. Look at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Very idea, accusing me of being racist. I'm trying to show you a blessing here that you got even more than the Jews in Israel today. Amen. I'm going to show you something right here. Look at Acts chapter 8. You know, the first time, the first convert, the very first convert of salvation by grace alone without works, trusting in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the very first Christian, so to speak. You know who it was? It wasn't the disciples, you got to understand. <laughs> the very first Christian it wasn't the disciples, you have to understand. Oh, uh, oh man, it's not the Christians. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's continue here. It wasn't the Jews at Jerusalem. If you doubt me, look at Acts 2.38. That is not the gospel. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sin. That was for the nation of Israel. God did not intend that. Okay, it's... A transitional book. If you don't understand the book of Acts, the kingdom was first, you know, presented to the Jews. That's why the sign gifts were there, the whole thing. Um, but that doesn't mean that they weren't Christians. That doesn't mean that they weren't in Christ. Okay, this is hyper dispensationalism. All right, the genie Kim here, he has to just kind of. Uh, I would deny hyper dispensationalism, but I need to use it for this particular video to get lots of views. So I guess I'll just use it. <sighs> Unreal. That for non-Jews. He had a purpose for the church. Non-Jews. He had a gospel for them. The gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ alone, mm -hmm. believing alone, without any work. You want the very first recorders? You won't find any other verse except Acts 8. That was the very first time. You can't find anything before that. Look at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. The very first person. Once the church was founded. Look at verse 27. And he arose and went. And behold a man of who? Ethiopia. Ethiopia a union of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. Who had the charge of all her treasure. And had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Was returning and sitting in his chariot. Read what? Isaiah the prophet. Okay. He read, he read Isaiah the prophet. Um, and that's 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. The gospel's clearly laid out there. Okay? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53, okay? Because this is what he's going to teach. I already watched the video one time through it. He teaches that Isaiah 53 contains the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and a and as a root out of a dry ground, he hath no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Is there any death, burial, and resurrection yet? No. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we just esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. There's the death. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he openeth, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. There's the death. Again, for the transgression of the, my people was he stricken. He, and he made his grave with the wicked. There's his burial. And with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. 
when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide with him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Now, you can, in looking back, we can kind of say, well, you kind of see a little bit of the resurrection there. But somebody in the past, they wouldn't have seen resurrection in those last couple of verses. They wouldn't have seen it at all. So how do you get in 1 Corinthians 15, the gospel which we now preach, which was revealed to Paul? We'll see about that here in a minute. Um, how are you getting that out of this? The Ethiopian eunuch is reading this. How's he getting 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 out of that? So the gospel was there in the Old Testament, apparently, according to Gene Kim. <clears throat> now let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this calls I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Okay. And Paul talks about my gospel. The gospel was not revealed to an Ethiopian eunuch through Philip. The gospel that we now preach was revealed to Paul. And Gene Kim knows this stuff. But see, he has to lie about scripture in order to make his little system work. So he gets a oh, big view video and everybody goes, wow, such depth of understanding. Dr. Kim is the greatest sorcerer I've ever seen. Let's continue here. Watch what he does. What was he reading about Isaiah the prophet? Look at verse 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his, <coughs> excuse me, his judgment was taken away. For who shall, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the Ethiopian eunuch, he's reading this passage from Isaiah 53. Do you know what Isaiah 53 is about? Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. <laughs> really? Where? Where? Gospel is available there to the people in the Old Testament. Then why did Jesus have to come and die <laughs> to fulfill that which is future? Oh, you get saved by looking forward to the cross. Now we get saved by looking back to the cross. So I've preached against that whole thing and debunked it. And he claims to be dispensational. But he has to dump dispensationalism to make his thing work. Ugh. Let's continue. The eunuch asked Philip, verse 34. Eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? And Philip's going to tell him that's Jesus, verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him who? Jesus. Look at verse 36 through 38, one of the greatest passages in your Bible. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, here's the salvation. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You'll notice verse 35, he heard the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. No, he didn't. You see, you see what false prophets do? They set up this little straw man argument, and then they say, I can't really prove it, but it's been proven. He preached the death, burial, and resurrection because um, he went to Isaiah 53. Then why does the Bible say it was revealed to Paul? Dispen you know, the dispensation of the grace of God there revealed to Paul and other ages it was not made known unto the sons of men. Why would he say that? And you're not going to get any other earlier record than this one 
where a clear-cut presentation of the gospel without works whatsoever. Clear-cut presentation of the gospel? It's not a clear-cut presentation of the gospel. He lied. He lied. Absolutely lied right there. And by faith, believing on Jesus Christ for salvation. This is the clearest, earliest record of a Christian saved. Um, so the disciples weren't Christians. The day of Pentecost, all the Jews that God saved, they weren't Christians either. Why did Paul then write about people being in Christ before me in the book of Romans? You're not going to get any earlier and clearer than that one together. So now we're teaching hyperdispensationalism? There, Gene Kim? That's what hyperdispensationalists teach. They teach that there were two bodies of Christ from you know, Acts 2, essentially, up until Paul, and then from Paul to the rapture. That's what hyperdispensationalists teach, which he would call a heresy, and yet he has to teach it in this video. Unreal. And uh, I'd also like to point out the fact, um, let me show you a little verse here. If you don't know your, your Bible, brethren, these guys will just take advantage of you like crazy. Acts chapter 11, verse 26, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. The first Christian in the Bible is the Ethiopian eunuch. No, they weren't even called Christians at that point in time. That came later. But that just messes up the video that can get lots of views and lots of ad revenue. And then notice verse 38. At, so 37, he got saved first. 38, then he got baptized. You know what your modern Bibles do with verse 37? They cut that off completely. And when they sliced it off, you know what they did? They robbed the blessing mm -hmm. for what God intended for black people to see. Mm -hmm. The first Christian convert who had the clearest gospel was a black person. Amen. That is a lie. That's a lie. And if you're black, you should be saying the same thing. That's an insult. That's a lie. The Jews were saved. The gospel was taken to the Jews first. The disciples of Jesus, they had to wait until, you know, this guy got saved, the Ethiopian eunuch, and now they can call themselves Christians. What? Weird. Ethiopian eunuch. But they cross that out, and they just assume in verse 36 and 37, he just get baptized for salvation. I wonder how many black Hebrew movement will trust in water baptism for salvation. Then. That's not the gospel. What did Paul say at 1 Corinthians chapter 1? I came not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. What is the gospel? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. This is the gospel. Moreover, I preach the gospel unto you, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Did that Ethiopian eunuch get that? Yes, and he got the gospel. Amen. So you got the first Christian convert right there in verses 32. Th See, again, he lies. Doesn't prove his point. And he says, there, there you have the first Christian convert. It starts out, well, you could say that this guy could be the, you know, and then later on when he gets you to the point where he's deceived you enough. So there you go. You have the first Christian convert. He's a liar. 38 the first see how God's God you gotta understand he works with pictures you gotta look at the Bibles if you look at the Bible the Bible says that when he gives prophecies and he gives stuff he gives it in similitudes he gives it in pictures and symbols why did Jesus spoke in parables you gotta understand to picture something else so God gave you a beautiful picture right here first Christian, so to speak, is a black person. First Christian, so to speak. <laughs> is he or isn't he? No, he's not. He's not the first Christian. Praise the Lord that the guy got saved. But it's he's not the first Christian. You know? And isn't it? Oh, we're not a racist here. Well, then what are you doing saying that the church is black and the first Christian that God waited till there was a black man that got saved or something like this? You're making difference within the body of Christ. God has some special thing for the black people or whatever else. And if you're white or, you know, Shemitic, well, then you're just pond scum, apparently. Huh? No.
person. Why? Because of this beautiful picture that God knew as Saul of Solomon. The wife of Jesus Christ, which is a church, will be a black person. Why would will be? Notice he said will be. Okay, we went over Revelation 19 at the beginning of this study. Where is there any collar or mention at all of the collar of the skin of this bride of Christ? There isn't anything. So again, you see how he just lied. It's not the Holy Spirit leading this guy. I've been warning about for a long time. And he's deceiving lots of people. People coming out and saying, I don't understand. This is really confusing what this guy is saying. We need to pray hard that this guy's channel gets taken down. And that this guy's mouth, his lying mouth, gets stopped. Let's continue. It gets even worse. Believe me. Would God want a black person right here? Because it perfectly pictures a servant, a sinner, who would humble himself before Jesus Christ. Why did he choose a eunuch, you got to understand, a servant? Why would he choose, in Psalm of Solomon chapter 1, a person who's despised by the Jews in Jerusalem? Who did the Jews despise? Gentiles, call them dogs. And then who did Jesus turn to? He turned to what? Gentiles, the dogs. And he turned to those people. And you got to understand this. This is a beautiful picture right here where a person realizes where he is despised and broken by the world, a servant of servants, and realizes, Lord, I am nothing without Jesus Christ. And it's that kind of humility where he would humble, he or she would humble himself before Jesus Christ and receive Jesus Christ for his or her salvation. That's Can you humble yourself and admit to being wrong there, Gene Kim? Being a liar? I highly doubt that. A beautiful picture of what a black person represents for Jesus Christ. And you just sully and ruin that picture by saying, no, I don't want to become this picture. I want to be like those Jews in Jerusalem instead. Mm -hmm. You know what God did with the Jews in Jerusalem today? Go to Romans 11. Okay. Now here is picture or total proof, 100% proof that this guy's running a cult. Okay. The... The, if you saw the one video I did about Jack Hiles caught and Jack Scapp is up front with the doing the polished shaft uh, sermon. I'm not joking. That's what it was called. And he's got an arrow shaft and he's doing this weird perverse thing, rubbing it with a cloth. cloth and, oh, oh, oh. I don't even want to. If you haven't seen it, go watch my video on Jack Hiles. Very disturbing. And everybody just sitting there. All the guys behind him. I can't do anything because it's we're. You know, the guy's the cult leader, and he's got us under his spell. I can't do anything. I'll just sit here and listen to him. That's what these Baptists do, right? They will, And what he just said is, go to Romans 11. And he is going to say to people that God cast away the Jewish people. Let me show you here before we even get to it. Romans chapter 11. This is unreal. Okay, Romans 11 verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. That means no, emphatically no. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So don't say, well, I think that in the sense there that it's a spiritual Jew. A Jew he's not one, a, a Jew which is one outwardly, but inwardly. You know, it's not talking about that. It's calling a Jew about a Jew after the flesh. Paul's not saying that he's a spiritual Jew. He clearly says, my ethnicity, I'm a Jew. I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. There's no question about what he's saying there. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. And you will hear Gene Kim right now say, God cast them away. While his people are sitting there looking at Romans 11, and not one person dares to call out their cult leader. And say, uh, uh, Pastor Kim, it says no here. You're saying yes, it says no. That proves he's running a cult. I've been in these places. I've seen them. Let's watch. Go to Romans chapter 11. You know what God did? They're despised, you got to understand. They're put aside. They're cast away. They're cast away. They're cast away. Hath God cast away his people? I mean, he's even using the scriptural term, cast away. God forbid. Okay? 
God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. They're not cast away. Gene Kim, you are lying. Why in the world do you want to become like the Jews in Jerusalem today? They're cast away. So you got to understand this. In the Old Testament, the people that God used were the Jews in Jerusalem. However, they rejected their Messiah. And during this transitional period right here, then God turned to who? The church, who are non-Jews. <laughs> the church who are non-Jews? <laughs> Excuse me? What? You know? Well, it blows my mind. All these people that follow Robert Breaker and Gene Kim, and they just they, they sit there and they just, uh, Jesus committed suicide, says Robert Breaker. And Paul was the first date setter, and I do not concur with Jesus saying that no man knoweth the day or the hour. Um, uh, you know, Gene Kim, they're cast away. Um, you know, they're done. They're, there's no Jews in the church. <laughs> okay, um, who wrote Romans 11? Hello? There's no Jews in the church. Okay, <laughs> continue. And when he turned to the church, you know what he did? He put, temporarily cast aside the nation of Israel. Now, this is not to say that the Jews in Israel are done. God's going to restore them again in the tribulation and then the millennium, which lasts for a thousand years. So then the Jews will be the focus again. But guess what? Uh, no, the Jews won't be the focus. The nation of Israel will be the focus. Okay. <laughs> uh, the time of Jacob's trouble. The Jews today, they're not the focus today. It's who? The church. Why in the world? The church that contains Jews. Oh, we're not racist here. What are you excluding the Jews for? In the year 2017, you want to be somebody who's not in this time period today and who's temporarily cast aside. You know what the time period is today? For the church. It's the church. Why wouldn't the black people want to become what? The Christian church. Why would they want to be something else who's cast aside and done? How many times has he said this? Cast aside, cast away. They're cast aside. They're cast... How many times has a guy said it? And these people are sitting there with their Bible open. Romans chapter 11. Gene Kim said it. I have to believe it. By God until later on in the future. That's why I'm telling you this is better than being a Jew. This is better than being a Jew. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 11. Romans. Being in the church is better than being a Jew. Okay. Tell that to the Apostle Paul or Peter or James or John or any of the other Jews. Chapter 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is what happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Notice right here that Israel is blindness in part. And not only that, that um, they are blinded and not coming in until when? Until a future time period. The fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And then verse 26 and then verse 27 sometime in the future. So you got to understand this. The nation of Israel is divorced, is cast aside. Did you read your Old Testament? The nation of Israel is divorced. It's cast aside. Romans 11. No, they're not. One more time. What did God say about the nation of Israel? I divorced them. Read the book of Hosea. I divorced the nation of Israel. He's done with them. But he put on a new wife. And that is who? The church. And then his new wife is the church. So if I so that's why I don't know if you know this, but the easiest group of people you will come across when you're soul winning, and the evidence is shown throughout. History today for the past 2,000 years, the easiest people to win to Christ are actually black people. Mm -hmm. They're the easy. Okay. Uh, isn't that kind of a racist statement? I guess, you know, when you're doing the little Baptist, you know, uh, 
one, two, three, or repeat after me, you know, whatever. Um, I guess then, you know, he's trying to say that black people are gullible or something or don't want to offend people. Wouldn't that be a racist thing to say? Black people are the easiest people to convert. What exactly is meant by that? Okay. Weird. Easiest to win to Jesus Christ. In fact, even the liberals' heroes, the liberals deify their black heroes trying to pro promote their liberalism through minorities, but they, even those liberal black heroes can't ignore God out of the equation. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, uh, if you look at a lot of black Hollywood actors, they talk about God, God worshiping God, and then they mention Jesus. Not only that, Martin Luther King Jr., what? He had to turn to the church. He had to become a preacher. Why? Because that's where most of the power, most of the people were at. And they were part of the Christian church that time period. Now, they there were wrong doctrines all over, but it doesn't change the fact that if you're going to have a group of people that's most soft-hearted to Jesus, yeah. it's actually black people. Amen. They're the easiest to win to Amen. Jesus Christ out of all races. By the way, do you know who's the toughest race to win to Jesus Christ? Yeah. If you go to the nation of Israel. Uh, really? A day of Pentecost? Uh, hello? Great multitudes being saved throughout the book of Acts. Huh? today there are missionaries who have you know who's the most of the members in the churches in bible believing missionaries churches it's not jews it's muslims now you know how hard it is to win a muslim to jesus christ i want a few homosexuals to jesus christ and didn't win a muslim yet to jesus christ you know how tough that is and you and and the black hebrew movement wants to become this really cast aside in darkness divorce by God and not only that going to hell if they don't receive Jesus Christ for their salvation so you but okay Gene there are we moving into hyper Calvinism now they're cast aside they're in darkness they're not and they're going to hell if they don't receive Jesus well how can they receive Jesus if they've been cast aside Ugh. you see don't cast aside a blessing that God has intended for you very idea that I'm racist. I'm actually putting you on a pedestal right here. Amen. I'm putting you on a pedestal. All Christians realize that that's their picture and that's what they ought to be. A servant of servants, broken down, realize they are a sinner in need of a savior. Cast aside by God's chosen people, the Jews, despised, hated, strangers, and considered as dogs, as Jesus called them at, Ke uh, at the book of Matthew. But that's what Jesus came. He says, unless you realize you're sinners in need of repentance. I came not to call the righteous, but who? Sinners to repentance. He wants you to be that downtrodden. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can come at the foot of the cross and receive Jesus Christ for yourself. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. Um, so there you go. Oh. The hardest thing to do brethren is to admit that you're wrong and to say you know what i'm in a cult and i need to get out of this um you get guys up on this level uh i've seen so many times in my life i've known them personally uh knew a guy a phd from tennessee temple dr arnold killinger i sat in his study i knew him personally we talked a lot i taught adult Sunday school at Cornerstone Baptist Church where he was the senior pastor and the man just he was a lot more humble than this Gene Kim but he had a lot of problems and Dr. Killinger Dr. Killinger and um the church started having problems and he had to go out and get a job and he basically um ended up being kicked out of the position of pastor because he was trying to have um, uh, fornication, I'll say, with multiple women at his job at the same time. Uh, PhD, Baptist. Okay. Um, and I've known these guys. Yeah, again, <laughs> I know these guys. I've been around them. I've talked to them. I I understand how the game is played here. And when you start doing this type of stuff, 
to get these ultra revelations and you start just destroying yourself doctrinally, just crossing out things that you believe and whatever, and to make the Bible teach something that it doesn't say, you're heading for disaster. And what's going to happen is these guys will get to the point where they're so puffed up and, oh, look at me and everything else. They get this God complex that I'm just up there and people say, you know, it's, I mean, watch the funeral of, or the, uh, yeah, the funeral service of Dr. Hiles, Jack Hiles. I mean, when we get to heaven, I hope that, that God lets us have some time with Brother Hiles. You know, he'll be sitting up there with the Lord. I'm, I know he will be. Maybe he'll be on the throne and, and God will be down worshiping him. You know, that's the kind of mindset that these people have. And they get to that level of thinking that they are God. And then when they fall, it they take a lot of people with them. That's why I determined years ago, when I start to see these guys, any any guy in the Bible believing movement starting to do that skyrocketing up and there's emulation and all this other stuff. And they're saying heresy and nobody calls them out for it in their congregation. I'm going to warn about it because if I don't, they're going to crash and burn and they take a whole lot of people with them. Very deadly dangerous. So uh, I just wanted to bring this thing out here. Um, you know, if you are a viewer of Gene Kim, and this is just one video, I mean, I, I haven't watched very many of his videos. I think probably less than 10 videos in the entire time he's been on YouTube. I just, I can't really stomach the guy that much and whatever. Um, but you have to follow along in the scriptures. You have to understand the basics of doctrine. And there are, when you're, when you are saved and you are dealing with people in ministry, um, there's a thing of grace. You have to understand that there are Christians that will say really stupid things and do stupid things and whatever else. And you have to have some grace there and kind of, you know, okay, well, I don't really agree with that, but, you know, and talk to people and whatever else. But when you're dealing with a pastor that's this far off, that's this messed up, you need to say, okay, this guy's a fraud. This guy's fake. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, perfect scripture. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Um, so, um, I believe he's a man of God. Well, then you are quite deceived. Please check yourself whether you're saved. And I'm not trying to insult you. You really need to check yourself. If you can sit there and watch Gene Kim openly lie about the Bible, the Holy Spirit's not causing him to do that. And that he's teaching some very serious heresy. So if you say he's still a man of God, then you need to check yourself. You really need to do that. Um, so. Hiles First Baptist Church has a dark demonic type energy. It's frightening. Very dark. Yeah. And again, I've talked to people that have come out of that cult and some of the stories I've been told by these people. Oh, man, there was there was all kinds of stuff going on there. Uh, really bad. Um, so. OK, um, that's going to be it. So just wanted to bring that out real quick. I was going to do just a screen capture type video and I thought, well, you know what, I'll just do a a uh, live stream come on here give people a chance to talk back and forth with each other and everything else um so <laughs> just unreal please run away from gene kim's ministry it's not a ministry and we need to pray about it because he's really making us look foolish as bible believers coming out with the, just the bizarre clickbait titles that he comes out with and the, the horrible stuff that this guy's saying so um and Please send this video to Gene Kim. Please contact him about this and say, you need to correct this. This is wrong. You openly lied about the scripture. You openly lied about the Jewish people over and over again. It wasn't just a slip of the tongue. He lied about the Jewish people. That's very serious. You start messing around with the Jews and, and Israel and everything. 
you are in very serious danger. Right? I've seen it personally over the years. So that is going to be it. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do pray for us.